local news that matters on Local 22 News. At this place in history, we're in the Lakeview Cemetery in Burlington with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, what are we talking about today? So we're going to talk about the contribution of black Vermonters to the American Civil War. This section of Lakeview, Terry, is where the bulk of um, black Civil War vets are buried. You said this section was for the black veterans, so I assume they were not buried with the white veterans then. As you walk throughout Lakeview Cemetery, there are veterans all throughout this cemetery. Mm -hmm. Some buried in family plots, but there is a specific section of the cemetery um, for Civil War veterans um, that you can find. It's up near the front and all the, the headstones look the same and, and, and whatnot, but uh, the black vets are not there. They're buried over here. In fact, there's a, a headstone um, for uh, Leander Freeman um, that is done in the exact style, the U.S. military style that you see up in that that section honoring Civil War vets, but it is down here uh, under the tree. I'd love to learn a bit more about Leander Freeman then. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, so he's really indicative of, of the experience of many um, black Vermonters in the Civil War. Vermont was a small state with a very small black population. When the federal law allowed for black regiments, of course, you know, we all know at the time the, the army was segregated, Vermont didn't have enough um, black men of the correct age to make a whole regiment. So they went out of state to join other black regiments. Leander went uh, south to Massachusetts to join the 54th. Uh, the 54th had famously attacked Fort Wagner um, and lost many, many men. And so they were rebuilding that regiment. And a lot of young men from Vermont joined the regiment um, after that battle of Fort Wagner and ended up getting sent south. And they were stationed in South Carolina and Florida. He um, experienced experienced what many of the other members of the 54th um, saw in that uh, they were paid um, $7 a month for their service when white soldiers got $13 a month plus a clothing allowance. Wow. Ultimately, through a letter writing campaign of black soldiers, and especially Vermonters, one Loudon Langley, who was a, a colleague, um, of Freeman uh, wrote very eloquently to the various papers in the North and to congressmen and got that changed so that their pay uh, was equalized. Freeman came home and joined what's called the Grand Army of the Republic. And so there's a, a, another vet behind me, um, William Davis, who also was a member of the 54th, part of the Grand Army of the Republic. Now you mentioned Loud and Langley. That name's ringing a few bells for me. Yeah, so if you remember, we, we went to the, um, the black community that grew up in the, along the Heinsberg Huntington line with Elise Guyette a number of years ago. Right. He was part of that extended community there. Loudon went south with the 54th, um, but he ended up joining um, one of the federal army groups, the U.S. Colored Infantry, where he was promoted to Sergeant Major, which is the um, highest rank that a black man could achieve in the Union Army. Um, he ended up staying in South Carolina and became part of Reconstruction government. Hmm. He was on the school board and he was one of the representatives that was sent um, to the state constitutional convention. And so he was part of a delegation largely of black men that helped rewrite the constitution for South Carolina. But ultimately re Reconstruction ended and Jim Crow South quickly mm -hmm. removed all mm -hmm. um, black people, mostly black men, um, from government. Um, and he, he ended up dying and he's buried in the federal cemetery in Beaufort, South Carolina. At this place in history, 